attack on state secretariat in Ibadan. Troops of the Nigerian army promptly respond to counter the incident. And experts advocate awareness on autism while preaching inclusion to use the talents and skills of autistic persons. Plus, trending news in the world of sports. Hello, and this is the outlook of Panorama today. I am Zenret Dingmun, and we're reaching you live from the nation's capital, Abuja. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Following the report of an attack on the State Secretariat Ibadan, or your state, on the 13th of April 2024, troops promptly responded to counter the incident. In a statement, the Director of Army Public Relations, Major General Onyema Nwachuku, says troops had contact with adherents of the Yoruba nation dressed in foreign military camouflage armed with weapons in buses and motorcycles. Upon sighting the troops, the Yoruba nation adherents engaged the troops in a shootout. However, the troops successfully subdued the attackers, who later retreated in disarray. Nine members of the group were apprehended, while one semi-automatic semi pump-action rifle and ammunition were recovered. Currently, troops are on the track of the fleeing criminals, and the situation is under control. The military, however, assures the public that necessary measures are being taken to ensure the safety and security of the area and urge the public to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activities to security agencies. Now, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesom Wiki, is optimistic that the Vice President's official residence will be delivered on schedule. The Minister gave this indication when he inspected the ongoing project this Saturday, 13th April, in Abuja. Onozi Akubo reports. This is the uh, significant progress. The Vice President's official residence in Abuja is one of the priority projects earmarked for inauguration day this year, when President Bola Tinibu will be marking his one year in office. Interlocking is complete, the blasting is ongoing also in this area. Optimistic and willing to fulfill his pledge of delivering the project on schedule, the FCT Minister is and Wiki visited the ongoing project site to ascertain level of work. The love is great and uh, this visit today shows there's a lot of uh, improvement. So. We believe, by the grace of God, that uh, something that we have finished. With the countdown to the delivering date and ticking ambiences all in a bid to meet up with the deadline, it is obvious FCT residents will witness what stakeholders term massive project execution in this ahead. Onuze Yakubu, NT News. And to education matters now, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMP, and the Nigeria Police Force have warned candidates preparing for the 2024 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, against patronizing fake websites. Olayin Kojo reports that this was at a joint news conference in Abuja. Candidates are to print their slips from the comfort of their homes or visit any of the over 700 accredited computer-based test CBT centers nationwide in a seamless process. The force public relations officer Olumuiwa Adejobi says there are several fake websites created by unscrupulous individuals with the intention of misleading candidates. He urges candidates to be wary of the antiques of fraudsters, saying the fake websites are designed to deceive innocent candidates into providing personal details such as registration numbers, email addresses and phone numbers. Scammers and fraudsters who engage in cyber related crimes and create phishing sites to potters and cause them to face the full rots of the law. And we are urging candidates to note that once you receive any unsolicited message, know that it is fraud, it is a scam. We have liberalized our processes. We have offices in all the 36 states of the Federation, including Abuja. Once you have any challenge, you can also raise a ticket. We have a ticketing platform. 
where your queries, questions will be attended to within 24 hours. Both organizations assured parents and candidates of their readiness to safeguard their interests and maintain the integrity of the examination process. Now, the development of every nation depends largely on the capacity of the younger generation. The present administration is not oblivious to that fact. Hence, the passing into law the student loan bill in high institutions. Lin Lineke examines the positives and the implications. Student loan scheme set to commence in the 2023-2024 academic session. Proper understanding of how it works is imperative, especially among beneficiaries. This raises the question about their level of awareness. I feel as a public student, the process of getting the student loan will be hard on our parents because, for instance, now you have to get the guarantor and it's a very difficult process. I don't really know anything about the loan. I don't know if we should go to the bank, local government, or, to, or the ministry. Great platform has been created, both in terms of funding the, 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 the loan scheme and also the structure to ensure that all the things are abide with. So I have no doubt in my mind that the objectives as stated by Mr. President will be fully, fully, fully achieved. This laudable fit by the Bolatinibu administration to ease the financial burden on parents, guardians, and even students who sponsor themselves will provide opportunity for disadvantaged students seeking higher education. As long as everybody abides by the rules as set in the law and also as said by the management and the board, I do not foresee any major impediment as we go other than, of course, the usual teething problem that might be when this, you know, when this scheme you know, you know, starts. Stakeholders who described the scheme as a game changer are optimistic that the benefits are enormous. It shows that there is a kind of concern uh, by this new administration that there is a kind of crisis within the education sector and that it is ready to tackle it. It is believed that the intervention will in no small measure enhance the quality of education. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. And it is a new dawn for Nigerian students as President Bola Tinibu recently signed into law the student loans, access to higher education, repeal and reenactment bill 2024. Olayin Kaoju in this report takes a look at the opportunities in the act which seeks to guarantee its sustainable higher education and functional skill development for all Nigerian students and youth. The Student Loan Act is a fulfillment of the promise made by President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu in his Renewed Hope Agenda for Education. This is because it will bring Nigeria closer to achieving Sustainable Development Goal 4, which ensures inclusive and equitable quality education. It ensures that no Nigerian, regardless of their backgrounds, will be excluded from obtaining access to quality education. We are determined to ensure Education is given the proper attention necessary for the country, including skill development programs. One interesting thing is that it gives access to funds for education and vocational training through a corporate body which will provide the loans to Nigerians for higher education and other related matters. Today, there's a growing support for the new law, especially among youths who are the sole beneficiaries, as it will build an army of workforce that will increase the country's productive force. Happy, And you see that even Nigeria's parents will be happy and will pray that those given the responsibility will effectively carry it out. To Actually, the student loan is good. First, it enables the student to go to school. But on the other hand, after graduating, will there be a um, job opportunity for the students so that they can be able to pay their loan? Nigeria, as at present, has more than 500 tertiary institutions. And unlike the Student Loan Act of 2023, the new act removes family income threshold, enables Nigerian students to apply and accept responsibility for repayment of the loan. The loan which is meant for solely public tertiary institutions, covers the cost of institutional fees of whatever course a student is studying. 
Being a well-intended project, the beneficiaries of the loan are expected to start repayments two years after national service. For funding, there are a number of contributions expected from government agencies. Other means of funding are revenues from shared profits from oil and minerals. Although this is not limited to government alone, there are rooms for high net worth individuals, corporations, non-governmental organizations, as well as general donors. Online Kaoju, NTA News. Well, students of tertiary institutions in Kaduna State said the loan scheme introduced by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is more than just financial aid, but a beacon of hope and a testament to the government's commitment to nurturing future leaders. Mohamed Umar Ajingi, who interacted with some of the students, student union leaders, reports that they expressed their appreciation for the opportunity to build a brighter tomorrow. The Students' Loan Scheme Program was introduced to offer support to Nigerian students. Abu Raymond Ojochoku, a 400-level medical student of Kaduna State University, remembered the challenging times when many of his colleagues had to drop out due to the sudden increase in their school fees. He says it was disheartening to see dreams put on hold because of financial constraints. As a medical student, I know the expensive nature of my textbooks, how expensive my textbooks are, the equipment I need to get, and even the finance. So basically, when the school fees were increased, I felt, at a point, felt all hope was lost. But with the introduction of the President Tinubu Students Loan Program, their hope has been reignited. Now students like Abu Ramon can continue their education without the fear of financial barriers. Abakar Muhammad is a president of Kaduna State Student Union, Kaduna State University chapter. Yeah, a lot of students have even dropped out due to that terrible increment. But schemes like this can even make those students say, okay, we still have chance. We can still enroll to maybe another tertiary institution, even not Kaduna State University. I know students for Kaduna State are actually grateful for this. And we pray that these people that want to be doctors, pharmacists, and also pilots that don't have this uh, money to actually sponsor themselves are actually going to gain this and, uh, and their dream is going to come through. I will say thank you uh, to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Fundamental Bosa to our able President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Bosa, Bosa, Bosa. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. Similarly, university dance and students in institutions of higher learning have lauded the action of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in removing all bottlenecks, holding down the student's loan scheme and signing it into law. Chair Gonu Aro felt the pulse of a cross-section of people in the university and now reports. Positive reactions and thumbs up are the expressions of university communities on the amended student's loan scheme. Since the 3rd of April 2024, when the bill became an act, students and parents have heaped sighs of relief. They are of the opinion that the scheme comes with a human face in many categories, such as skills acquisition, which includes vocational students, and inclusion of welfare on tuition. The president had humanized the act. He has given it a human face. For instance, now, the new Act, the 2024 Act, has provided for also the needs of students that are in vocational training, not only in the higher institution. I'm very impressed. It's a legacy project for me as far as I'm concerned, and uh, we thank Mr. President for, for doing this, because access to education, and education is a right that's supposed to be enjoyed by all, irrespective of their financial status or financial or social status. To relieve a lot of uh, hardship of our students, because many of the students are, are really going through hard times now. It will help them like in order to bring up a budget, a particular amount of budget, so that they won't, they won't depend on their parents mostly. They applauded the fully automated system of the loan scheme in Enugu, Chiegono, Aro, NTA News. We'll take a break now. Panorama returns in a moment. The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise 
our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. I believe we have fought one civil war too many in this country. So those who experience it will run away from it. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Welcome back. The United States government pledges to support Nigeria's fight against terrorism as the country marks 10 years of the abduction of over 200 schoolgirls in Chibok, Borno State, Northeast, by terrorists. This is contained in a statement issued by the spokesperson of the U.S. Embassy Aisha Gambari in Abuja. Gambari says the U.S. would also support Nigeria's terrorism survivors and their families saying that the U.S.-Nigeria partnership was built on a foundation of shared values and common goals. She says the United States will continue to support Nigeria's efforts to combat terrorism and to hold perpetrators of terrorist attacks accountable as well as guarantee citizens' safety and well-being. Recall that on the 14th of April 2014, Boko Haram terrorists stormed government girls' school, secondary school, Chibok, in Borno at night and abducted no fewer than 276 girls. The girls were preparing for that year's senior West African school certificate examination. A decade since then, while some of them were found, about 89 others have yet to return. Now, Niger state government has embarked on construction of 1,000 kilometers road projects across the state with the aim of improving the quality of lives of citizens and economy, economic fortunes of the state. The state governor, Mohamed Umaru Bago, during the groundbreaking ceremony of 118 kilometers road in, Kont in Kontogora, says the efforts is geared towards the realization of his urban renewal policy, Hussein Amosa reports. The 1,000 kilometers road project embarked upon by the Niger state government spread across the three geopolitical zones of the state. 400 kilometers are federal routes. The 118-kilometer road project in Kontogura covers reconstruction of the 90-kilometer Kontogura Regional Road, construction of 19.4-kilometer Western Bypass and 8.7 Eastern Bypass Ring Road, all in Kontogura Axis. The projects, which have been awarded to different contractors after careful selection, will be closely monitored to deliver according to specifications. Similar events have also been flagged off across the three senatorial districts of the state. Before we conceived this project, we already got funding for it. We are not expecting unnecessary variation. So what we have decided to do, we cannot let our people suffer in the name of waiting for federal government intervention. So as a state and with the collaboration with the Prime Minister of Works and also the presidency, Mr. President has already given us a go ahead with these jobs. So with all these uh, efforts, we are sure that uh, we are going to bring our Sukho to our people. Niger State being an agrarian community, the urban renewal efforts of the Governor Mohamed Umaru led administration when it comes to fruition will no doubt open up the hinterlands and promote socio-economic activities in the state through agriculture. Emena Hussein Musa, NT News. Now, experts are advocating improved awareness on autism while preaching inclusion to make the most of the talents and skills of autistic persons. This was at a campaign in Abuja by the RBM Aut Autism Foundation in commemoration of the Autism Awareness Month. Victor Azu was there and now reports. Autism spectrum disorder is a neurodevelopmental condition that is said to affect about 168 million people around the world. 
in Nigeria. A speculative one in 150 children has autism. Limited data collection and awareness in the country explains why statistics can be challenging to pinpoint. Drawn to advocacy by the loss of a loved one to autism, Maria Okafo is one of the few creating awareness and advocating improved care for autistic children. I noticed uh, the gap, um, the lack of awareness in the here. society. I you feel stop. like a whole lot of people do not understand what autism green, means. Like, West, there's so many when misconceptions yellow, that needs to be clarified and needs to be again. spoken about. And that's when what I we intend to achieve. Green, in commemoration of this year's Autism Awareness Month, the Ria by Maria RBM Autism Foundation is calling attention to these lifelong developmental disorders and how to support and get the best out of autistic children for the benefit of society. By fostering acceptance, understanding and support, we can create a more inclusive world where individuals with autism are valued for who they are. You have that power to change your attitude, to impact your community, and to raise a productive and happy member of society. Finally, an opportunity for guests to let go of loved ones lost to autism, but vow never again. In Abuja, Victor Azu News. The Nigerian Navy has apprehended four individuals for stealing metallurgical coke stored by Ajakuta Steel Company Limited in Kogi State. Metallurgical coke serve, serves as a power source for heavy-duty equipment. Jonathan Omajali reports that the suspects are between the ages of 15 and 22. Ajakuta Steel Company Limited specializing in the sourcing and production of iron ore for the manufacturing of various metallic materials, particularly for automobile needs, has recently faced a setback. Years ago, a quantity of its product intended as stock for the company was stored along the jetty route of the industry for convenient access. However, criminals managed to breach the facility's security gaining entry from the riverside and absconding with over 300 bags of metallurgical cook. Commodore Mosi Zekpele, the commander of Nigerian Navy Ship Lugard, upon apprehending the culprits and handing them over to the Nigerian police, urged the management of Ajakuta Steel Company Limited to reevaluate its security framework in anticipation of the revitalization initiatives beheaded by the administration of President Bola Amir Tinubu. On the part of Nigerian Navy ship Lugard, we shall not rest on our oars in curbing activities of miscreants along the waterways of Kogi State. You can see that they assess this place through the waterways. Kogi State government lauded the collaborative efforts of joint security agents, which led to the apprehension of these criminals. This effort we are seeing today, we believe, is going to serve as deterrent to criminals and will be criminals who want to test the resolve of the government of Kogi State to perpetuate any act of criminality within the territory of Kogi State. Concerted efforts are underway to revive Ajokuta Steel Company Limited, especially with the appointment of Shaibu Audu, an indigent of Kogi State, as the Minister of Steel by the administration. Jonathan Omajali, NTA News. Let's now join our sports desk for the latest in the world of sports. Organizers of the Nigeria Premier Football League have rescheduled match the 30 fixtures with only two games set to take place this weekend. All other matches will now take place on Tuesday, April the 16th. Sunday's fixtures will see Ayimba International host Heartland in an Oriental derby with Enugu Rangers playing at home to Abia Warriors in another derby. In the English Premier League, Manchester City moved to the top of the table with a 5-1 victory over Luton Town at the Etihad Stadium. Tottenham suffered a humiliating 4-0 defeat at the hands of Newcastle United, ending their three-match unbeaten run. Manchester United drew 2 all away to Bournemouth, while Wolverhampton Wanderers also held Nottingham Forest to a 2-0 draw, with Brentford getting a 2-0 win over Sheffield United. 
away to the Monte Carlo Masters as Casper Ruud avenged his loss in last year's French Open final by record in a shock 6-4, 1-6-6-4 win over Novak Djokovic in a thrilling semi-final. He will now face Stefano Tsitsipas in the title clash after the Greek upset Yannick Sinel in the first semi-final. Finally, former U.S. Open champion Emma Raducanu had an exceptional weekend as she defeated Diana Parry of France 4-6, 6-1-7-6 to secure Britain's spot in the Billy John King Cup finals on Saturday. In other results, Slovakia defeated Slovenia to secure their place in Seville, while Naomi Osaka's Japan emerged victorious against Kazakhstan. With sports update, Badi Adeleye, NT News. And that's Panorama today. Thanks for sharing your time with us. I'm Zenret Dingmoon.